Let me ask you a question. Do you want to get more views and subscribers to your YouTube channel in 2019? Whether you're just starting out a YouTube channel or you've been growing your channel for a while, I think most people want to see their channel grow and flourish as they invest their time and energy into it. So I started my channel in 2006, I think it was. Um, didn't really know what I was doing. Didn't really have a focus for it. So I didn't really um, have much, you know, uh, much material to uh, put on there. But um, at that time, I was starting my web design business. Uh, well, been, had, had been going it for a few years, but uh, decided to do some web design tutorials. And I found that they ranked really well in the search in the, in the YouTube search engines. So then I kind of uh, got more into video and a few years later, I kind of more focused more entirely almost all of my work onto uh, video marketing and use, using that to get uh, traffic leads and sales. But I think whether you're just starting off or you just have a small channel, or even if you have a large channel, you're always interested in, in growing your channel to get more views and subscribers, or if you're trying to get leads, then get more leads. Uh, if you're trying to make money, then you want to make more money. So I assume that everybody, you know, on this live stream are really interested in growing their channel. But um, just uh, let me know in the chat what what is one of the main factors that contributed to the growth of your own channel. Put it in the chat there. So uh, my name is Herman Drost. I'm from uh, the YouTube channel I Site Build. So if you're not already, not already subscribed, then uh, the channel is all about how to grow grow your YouTube channel um, using using videos, and you can generate traffic, leads, and sales on autopilot. So how do you do that through finding good topics, keyword research, etc. So my channel is all about uh, you know growing your channel. So you can then you know get those traffic, get those leads, get those sales rolling in on autopilot, twenty four hours a day, seven days a week. So I want to uh, welcome everybody here. We've got in the on the live stream. We've got more duplicator. It's an interesting name for the channel. We've got John. Good to see you, John. Good morning. Good afternoon here, Harry J W. Got the off grid homesteader Cecile. Uh, good to see you. Uh, Flower Guy, good to see you. Harley, good to see you. And uh, Jock Brokers, good to see you there. And John Eckhart, oh, I mentioned you already. And uh, Rose and Grace. And we've got Muhammad. And we've got uh, other people coming in. So, yeah, so this, uh, this live stream is, uh, I kind of thought I'd talk about uh, YouTube growth strategies in 2019. I didn't, th didn't think things have changed that much over the years, but I thought I'd just go through 10 growth strategies that you can implement on your channel right away. And probably you're, you're probably familiar with, with some or most of these, but I thought I'd go through it one by one. Uh, I'm not going to go super in depth because a lot of my uh, videos on my channel go into those growth strategies. But, you know, if you uh, find at the end of the presentation that there's, uh, you know, you have another strategy that's worked uh, amazingly well and um, has worked well for you on your channel, then let me know. We'll, we'll definitely uh, mention that uh, on the live stream. So... Um, so I'm going to go into these 10 YouTube growth strategies for 2019 so you can attract more views and subscribers. So the first one is, and I think this um, this is actually uh, a lot of people when they start a YouTube channel are not too sure about, you know, what to, what to start the YouTube channel about. But I put the first one as to be passionate about your niche. So the reason I mentioned that is that if you don't have a passion for the topic or niche that you're in, then, uh, you know, when the going gets tough, maybe you get up one day and you just don't feel like creating any content, editing any videos, um, 
you know, you're just not motivated, then because you have a strong why, you know, a strong purpose and passion for your niche, you kind of just barrel through those um, those feelings that, you know, prevent you from creating content. You know, maybe you don't feel so creative or maybe you don't feel so inspired. And you're going to get those days even when you're passionate about your niche. But if you have a passion for your niche, then that kind of gives you the momentum to go through the the hills and the valleys or the roller coaster ride of creating consistent content. So, um, and uh, actually when I got back from New Zealand, uh, my four week vacation, then I really didn't feel like uh, creating the regular videos, but because I've been outside for uh, for four weeks, you know, hiking mountains and uh, beaches, etc. So I, I kind of decided, well, I'm going to film outside. So the last few videos of being kind of going outside because it's spring and it's great weather instead of, you know, going and staying in my office, staying in my studio. So um, so you got to kind of switch things around a bit sometimes to stay interested, stay passionate about your niche. And uh, I think um, that's why I mentioned it as one of the first uh, strategies. Um, also concerning your niche, uh, you don't want to go too wide. So go too wide, you want to narrow down your niche. So if you're if your niche was about how to train puppies, uh, that's that's a huge niche or how to train dogs, but you would want to narrow it, niche, niche it down to like how to train um, corgis or how to train dash hound, dash hounds or how to train Rottweilers. You know, so you, you're going to niche it down to a specific breed or maybe how to train uh train a dash hound not to bite or so you know so you're going to look at for those long keyword phrases and uh, based upon your keyword research then you want to choose a niche that uh there's not we don't go too broad but if you niche it down then you get more specific and then your topics are going to be more specific and you're getting you're going to get a more hungry audience based upon um based upon niching niching uh, niching down your particular topic so and then you also you have to ask yourself when you create your channel and your videos you know is this is it will this be a channel that people want to watch and if it's your passion then um you know you'll want to watch your own videos or you'll attract other people that want to watch your particular video. So if you ask, always ask the question, when you create a video, is this something that I, being my own target audience, wants to watch? And am I solving their problems? Am I entertaining them? Am I, uh, is this video going to be something that they're really interested in? So this kind of, you know, homes in on what is your target audience? So you're you have your own passion, but then you want to create videos that people want to watch and you want to kind of home in on what your targeted audience is. So best is to just think of one person that your videos could be for. You know, it could be uh, a 30 year old dad that has puppies and uh, makes 30,000 a year or something like that. So the more specific you can get about an ideal audience, then um, then you know your videos be more specific, geared towards that particular audience. Oh, flannel said, "I laughed at Dash Hound. If you're not laying down on the ground, they can't hurt you." Yeah, well, probably not a great example because uh, I haven't never had a Dash Hound. So um, thanks for mentioning that. Okay, so the second one uh, I mentioned is uh, branding your channel. So once you've decided, you know, once you've figured out your passion or what your great interest that you want to impact the world or let other people know or uh, want to tell them, you know, how how thing, you know, what uh, how to fix something or how to entertain them or how to do something, then and you've figured out your target audience, then you want to create your channel and you want to. Uh, create the branding elements that uh, are going to be attractive. So therefore, you're going to uh, have a great channel banner that 
within five seconds, people will be able to figure out uh, what your channel is about. So you want to put your uh, make your channel banner attractive and uh, also put your uh, maybe you can put your schedule on there. You can put a um, uh, what do you call it? A uh, I forgot the name, but like a little uh, little saying along there, along your banner. Um, you can also um, not only put your schedule or put your you know your your logo on there, etc. But um, you want to also uh, create you know create the 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 colors and the design should fit the thumbnails. So your thumbnails are going to you know when people see your thumbnail then they can associate that with your channel. So when people first go to your channel, they're going to see your home page. And on your home page, they're going to see your channel banner. And then they're going to drill down, see your channel trailer, your um, your playlist, your videos in your playlist that contain thumbnails. So um, so therefore, it's like um, kind of like entering a book. You know, you see the cover, which is like your channel banner. And as you go down your as they scroll down your homepage, then they can dive deeper into your content by watching your channel trailer, uh, watching some of the videos on your playlist. So they, uh, you know, they'll be clicking on your thumbnails. So they'll, they'll see the see the title of your playlist. They'll see the description of your playlist. They'll see your thumbnails, and then they go deeper and deep, deeper and deeper into your, into your content. And as a result of that, there's more. Uh, motivation for them to then subscribe to your channel. It might even take several visits, but the fact that if you've got a, a great, uh, great channel art through your thumbnails, your banner, your playlist, etc., then you know and everything's congruent. And everything's not uh, all different colors. You've got pink, blue, yellow, red. You know, it's uh, all mixed up. Then it might be hard for them to, uh, you know. Be, or, or, be motivated to therefore subscribe to your channel. So, uh, and then on your channel banner, uh, that's probably what I was thinking about before, like a slogan or a value proposition. So, what is uh, what's the what's if you summarize the content of your channel, what is the one thing that um, that encapsulates the content of your channel? Um, you know, it could be like in my in my case, you know, build you know, building traffic through online video. Um, well, let me know in the in the in the chat. You know, what is your val? What is a value proposition for your own channel? Like, what's a what's a slogan? What's the the uh, uh, the one sentence that you know, three or four words that describes or encapsulates the content of your channel that people will be motivated, therefore, to check out more of your channel. So uh, let me know in the uh, in the chat. And uh, just while we're talking about branding your channel, uh, I think it's it's important to also uh, give a very good description on your about page. So you want to uh, not just talk all about yourself, but when people go to your about page, give them, you know, start off your, your about the description on your about page with uh, what's the a benefit driven paragraph. So, um, you know, if you're interested in growing YouTube channel, getting more YouTube subscribers, then uh, make sure you subscribe to my channel. So, you know, something, something that not, not say, well, my name's Herman Drost, I'm a great YouTuber and uh, please subscribe to my channel. That's not going to cut it. You want to uh, you know, describe something that uh, maybe two or three benefits. And then at the end of your description, you can invite people to subscribe to your channel, uh, check out the videos, etc. And, and then maybe mention a little bit about yourself. So I've got a few answers here on the value proposition. Um, So, Lanzia says, I have a multilingual toy videos channel. So, maybe get clearer on what your value proposition is that you can put in your banner uh, on, or on your channel. And Lisa Kaspen Cas Quilts, 
making quilts with clothing. So that's uh, three words clearly defines what her channel is about. So that's a good one. Okay, I'll go back up here. Okay, Grizz270 says, uh, I pretty much uh, around woodwork is doing fair. I have another channel that ain't doing so well, but it's more about country living. Should I combine them until I get larger? Um, well, yeah, if you if you're uh, if you can kind of uh, integrate woodwork with country living, I think that that would kind of mesh together. You could uh, just have one channel and then just, you know, use different playlists to kind of uh, create different categories for that one channel. Because having two channels and trying to upload uh, content all the time, uh, probably not going to have enough time. But if you focus on one channel and, uh, you know, you really get that going, I think that's uh, probably a better focus. And Jock, Jock says, uh, my slogan, Attraction Marketing. Um, I'd probably try to be more specific on that. It seemed like a huge topic. And Harley saying, I make stuff in the workshop out of wood, metal, electronics, and other similar materials. So, yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty clear. I might want to somehow shorten that, but I think that pretty much clearly outlines what your channel's about. Okay, so we talked about uh, branding your channel. Uh, number three, this is not uh, probably something that many people um, start with when they first start a channel, but I thought I'd throw it in there because um, not many people really talk about it. But I got number three to build a website that you can um, embed your videos on. So, because the reason I mentioned this is because one of my um, top traffic sources comes from videos, comes from comes from Google search. And the reason that it comes from the traffic comes from Google search is because I've been embedding videos in my blog, or my website for several years. I don't do it all the time, but throughout the years of, uh, you know, I've embedded videos in there. And it does take a while for Google to pick up your video. But, you know, recently, a probably first several months ago, or maybe in a year, they're, they're showing the uh, carousel of videos at the top of the Google search results. And they're, they're all YouTube videos. So as a result of that, uh, one, of my, one of my videos that I created even six years ago is actually one of my top performing videos as far as getting traffic. And it's all coming from external, which is actually Google search because I got that, I embedded that video. It's not a great video. It's like, I kind of cringe when I watch it, but it, uh, it's producing a lot of traffic on a consistent basis uh, every day. So that I created that six years ago, but it's not getting any, I don't think it's getting much YouTube search traffic, but it's kind of getting a lot of Google search traffic. So therefore I recommend um, creating a blog or a website for your for your YouTube channel and then you know when you've uploaded the video you can take that embed code and put it on put it on your website uh, take the transcript or, or create a summary uh, a summary of your content and put that on your website and uh, maybe not immediately you'll get that external traffic but in the long term you'll get traffic from Google so your your video will show up in Google and YouTube or just Google, which is great because it's a number one search engine or YouTube or, or YouTube suggested. So, so in that way, um, I, I'd recommend like a WordPress site is easy enough to set up and you get some free, uh, free templates there, uh, etc. So, so if you can get traffic from both YouTube search, 
Google search, then you've got the two biggest search engines on the net that are then sending you traffic. And, you know, maybe that, that one, the, those few videos you created some time ago, you kind of forgot about them, but down the road, they could be ranking in Google search. So uh, next one is um, planning your content. Number four, plan your content. So um, when you're planning your content or when I plan my content, I tend to, uh, well, first I, I kind of gather ideas. It could be when I'm, when I'm running, when I'm walking, when I'm out and about. So I, uh, I use the, uh, the, the app on, the, uh, on my iPhone to kind of jot them down. And uh, then I'll create a content calendar of ideas uh, in a Google um, a Google Doc, I'll just kind of put it down there and write down, put down all the ideas, and I'll kind of categorize them into different themes. And then if I think of a particular theme, say it might be uh, oh, how to grow your channel, for instance, then I might uh, create say like ten videos on how to grow a YouTube channel, and then I put all of that, all of those videos based upon that theme into a playlist and then each individual video I can then link to the next video in that playlist or when I create a video I can link back to the video I created previously that aligns itself with the theme so so when you're when you when you're planning your content then you want to think what is a theme that I can create a series of videos and instead of creating one video and then moving on to the next one you can think about a series of videos that you can put in a playlist and then you can link to that playlist from other videos, from your website, from social media sites, etc. And so people will, uh, instead of getting kind of like one video about some content, then they can go dive deeper into the content by binge watching your videos. And that, that means that you're, you're, you're going to, uh, people are gonna stay on YouTube for a longer period of time. And if you get a long watch time and good audience retention, then your videos get uh, pushed uh, to be easy to rank, uh, pushed to suggested, etc. cetera. So, um, so a long watch time or a long session time, which means they start at one video, then they go to the next video, next video, next video. So you get, you get this long session time and then that contributes to YouTube pushing your videos uh, or promoting your videos. So, so therefore, um, planning your content is great. And then, you know, coming up with video ideas. Um, I think one of the, one of the, the, the greatest ways to grow your, your channels, if you can find a, a trending topic in your niche and, uh, you know, you kind of create a video around that. And, and then if that trend takes off, then you can get a lot of traffic. Uh, for example, I created a video beginning of last year on, you know, how to monetize your channel without, uh, without AdSense, without um, joining YouTube Partner Program. And um, I kind of put it out there and it just suddenly it took off. I think it has close to like half a million views now, so over one year. So that contributed to fast growth of my channel. Now to duplicate that, it's not so easy. You gotta, you know, uh, find another trending topic. So, um, yeah, so trending topics, uh, and then, so planning your content ahead of time. And then if you can then, uh, you know, script your videos or do s several scripts at once, then you can, batch record your videos, uh, you know, say take one day to write out four scripts and then the next day or in the morning or however, however long it takes, you can batch record four videos. And then if you're just uploading one video a week, you got four videos ready to go for the whole month. So that kind of takes the stress out of uh, coming up with new content uh, doing other things you know, in your life that, that are needed as well. And so uh, so if you can batch batch script, batch record, batch, well, I wouldn't say batch edit, but you can 
usually I just edit my videos on time blocks. You know, I do two hours in the morning, then I might do another hour at night, and then another couple hours the next day. So I kind of edit the videos throughout the week, and then I'll move on to the next video. But I think the batch scripting, batch recording, is a great way to kind of get ahead on your content calendar instead of just, uh, you know, kind of uh, looking at a blank computer screen and trying to think, you know, what 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 am I going to create today? Or, or you know, feeling the pressure to come up with content. And then what happens when you try to force the content, force the creativity, then it doesn't, uh, you know, it, it's harder to come up with the creative ideas. Oh, Chris said, I got a lot of views through Google search. It helps using a brand in your title, such as in my case, uh, Harbor Freight Sawmill. Oh, thanks for that tip, Grizz. That, that's great. You got a lot of uh, traffic through that. That's a great tip. And um, oh, Scott's saying, what, what sites are used to find trending topics? Uh, you can go to you can go to Google Trends. That's um, just, you know, type that into the Google search bar. Um, you can also go to TubeBuddy. TubeBuddy, when you do the keyword research and the keyword explorer tool, then it has, um, it ha it, you can do the keyword research there. You can find trending. I think it has a trending, a trending tab, which pulls in the uh, trending topics from Google Trends. So you can look at that. But you could also go to your competition and find out, you know, what what videos are getting a, a ton of traffic, and maybe you know maybe they're doing a series on on a particular topic, and, and you know that that topic is pretty hot, and then you can try to find a different angle or a different keyword phrase that you can present your own kind of angle or commentary about, or you might even do a reaction video. Uh, to, to the topic. So um, so there's just some ways that you can find those trending topics. And Jock is saying, uh, how long does it take for each video? Uh, well, it depends on the, kind of depends on the topic. If I'm very familiar with the topic, then I'll just cr quickly create some bullet points. That, that might take 30 minutes or less. And then if I'm very familiar with the topic, I'll just turn the camera on and uh, then I'll just start talking and I just let the camera roll instead of stopping and starting the camera. And I'll just kind of like do a kind of a stream of consciousness based upon the bullet points. And then I can, you know, knock out the, uh, the video uh, within maybe 30 minutes or an hour. But a lot of times I do uh, more research, research uh, you know, do more research for the video. So if it's a three minute video, it's easier and takes a shorter amount of time. But if it's like a 10 minute video, I'll go more deeply to the research. I might research uh, one, two or three hours. And then uh, then if I, I put a lot of work into the uh, shooting the video, I'll, take, I'll get some B-roll and, uh, you know, go through my points. And then the editing is going to take might take a whole day sometimes to to edit the video. So a short videos might take a few hours. Longer videos are going to take much longer. Okay, so um, oh, okay, got another jocks. Not another question here. Do you always script to find it difficult and feel more comfortable doing it off the top of my head? Any tips on scripting? Well, as I just mentioned, uh, if you're familiar with the topic, then you can just write down to several bullet points. Or if you if you have a good memory uh, and you can memorize all the points, you don't have to write them down. Then then I can say just turn on the camera and get it rolling. And I think the key is like when you're just very familiar with the topic and know what you want to say, without you know, kind of stumbling and rambling on because you don't want to ramble because then you're going to lose your audience. But um, if he, I mean, the key is to that you can come across naturally and personally and authentic to your audience. 
then I would just go with what you're comfortable doing. But for me, I tend to uh, write down some bullet points or if it's a longer video, I'll, I might script some of the uh, things I want to say. So that the whole point of scripting is that I'm not going to get off track and start rambling or, uh, you know, talk about things that are, are not totally focused on the title of my video. So basically it helps me to keep on track, helps me to keep my thoughts organized and stop me rambling and also helps me to remember. So uh, that's kind of why I kind of the script or the bullet points help. Okay, so uh, number four is planning your content. Uh, number five, I've got the keyword research. And I, I mentioned, I think five is probably, should be even number one, but because, uh, you know, you, you're trying to come up with topics, you know, if you discovered your passion or trying to find your passion. Um, but keyword research is really the foundation for a good video. So, for instance, if you... Uh, if you do your uh, do the good research and find topics that get uh, a gr have a great search volume, so they have like ten thousand searches per month, then the competition is very low. And you know, you look at the videos that are on on YouTube, and you find oh, those people are you know the thumbnail is not great. The guys just you know the guy or girls just waffling on. Um, uh, or maybe the videos were created three years ago, then you can fill that gap with uh, with a video based upon your keyword research. So the, the keyword research, particularly if you've got, if you're in a competitive niche, like my, my niche is like super competitive. So uh, my research, you know, you're always trying to find different angles, different ways, different kind of keyword phrases could be a, a three keyword phrase, could be a five keyword phrase to uh, that's that's still got search volume, but not too much competition. So the TubeBuddy tool is great for that. And Morning Fame tool is great for that too, because it'll show you the videos that you need to double down on. I think VideoQ has, has that in their free, uh, their free, uh, free uh, extension tool, Chrome extension tool. But if you can double down on the videos that are already doing well, so say for instance you got a, a video on your on your site on your on your channel called How to Train Puppies, and that's doing extremely well, then you want to just you know kind of double down on that video and find other topics that are similar to that uh, that topic that's doing very well. So you might create another ten videos that are kind of focused on that topic so because you know already that 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 particular video has got is attracting traffic from youtube so uh so but then doing a the keyword research you know if you want to uh, look at the youtube search bar uh go to the google search bar it'll find you give you the related keywords that you can come up with and then you find want to go into like uh use a tool like um, keywords everywhere to look at the search volume just to see what kind of volume is there and then you might check out some of the videos of your competition that are that are also targeting the same keyword phrase to see how old the videos are maybe the thumbnails no good you know you could do a better design so you can get a higher click-through rate uh, maybe you can even create a longer video maybe a, your competition has only a three-minute video on that topic but you could choose a similar topic and do a longer video, a more engaging type of video. And uh, if you can keep people watching all the way through like a, a 10 minute video that's similar to your competition, it's only got a three minute video, then your video could rank higher than theirs. So, you know, those kind of things you can do to uh, in your keyword research. So you want to get the YouTube suggestions, the Google suggestions, Use a TubeBuddy tool, use the uh, Morning Fame tool, and uh, then also uh, you could use something like Answer the Public too, which is uh, uh, a free tool that you can use to find the questions that people have uh, that are related to your niche. 
And so you kind of, you know, you come up with tons of video ideas, but then the keyword research is the foundation for a good video. Because if you can find, you know, a good search volume, a good topic, not so much competition, then you know that people, are, you know, that people are actually searching for that particular keyword phrase. And then you have a higher chance of that video ranking in the search engines. So the number six is, you know, after you have done your keyword research, you got to create the video. So I'll put number six to create and engage, create engaging content. So having a good hook at the beginning, like a question, or maybe you mentioned statistic, you know, some, uh, you know, you could say, hey, did you know that six million people are on YouTube every day? Or you know, so you can mention some st statistics where you can make a bold statement. Or you could do something entertaining at the beginning of your video because the beginning of your video is uh, first, like I'd say, first five to ten seconds of your video. You know, it's going to start off people clicking on your thumbnail, and then and you're looking at your title and they'll decide to click on your video. Then you know, if that first few seconds doesn't hook your viewers, it's more likely they're not going to watch the rest of your video. So. Make sure that um, those first five, 10 seconds, you're asking a question, or I think another way, another great way to do it is to uh, say, say, your, um, say your video is about how to train a, a puppy uh, to, uh, to sit or something like that. So at the beginning of your video, you can immediately show what you're going to be talking about so how you, you can show the puppy that as you give the command it's sitting you know it, it, it replies to your command or obeys your command and then so this beginning of your video your hook could be showing them and then explaining later instead of you know giving a, a big reason why you should watch the video and what's coming up next you can kind of show them first and then continue watching the rest of the video to show you how I uh, how I was able to train this puppy to uh, obey my commands. So that'll be another way to, uh, to, to, to do that. So yeah, so after you've done the uh, introduction, then you want to get into the meat of the content and go through your bullet points that are in your head on a piece of paper and try to come across naturally, authentically, and then also try to uh, you know, change change the scenery, change your change your position uh, every you know ten seconds or twenty seconds, so you reset the attention of your viewer. And so you know, people are, these days are very uh, short, have a short attention span. So adding some B roll, adding transitions, changing positions, changing scenery uh, will reset the attention of your viewers and keep them watching all the way through your video. Now, at the end of the video, you give a strong call to action to uh, check out the next video or download my cheat sheet or uh, give a like or uh, make sure you comment on my video. But I think one of the most powerful calls to action is to uh, link to a playlist where they can binge watch more videos related to the video that they've just watched. So, uh, so they have a chance to dive deeper into your content and deeper into your channel and if they watch more of your content then uh, YouTube will uh, promote your uh, video on on its uh, on the in the YouTube search area oh Scott is a good question uh, now that you have 42,000 subscribers do you find it easy to rank on keywords that are more competitive in the YouTube educating niche? Um, well, the answer would be yes and no. Um, yes, it is. If it's not, uh, if it's a topic that is uh, uh, not as competitive, like I'll, you know, go on like a side branch of the YouTube education niche that's not as competitive. But if I was, um, say, I did a video on like how to grow. YouTube channel, how to get more views and subscribers, then I'm competing with channels that have maybe half a million subscribers or several million subscribers. 
So I'm not going to outdo them, but therefore I recommend to look for keyword phrases. Even, you know, even when you have a high competition, you can still find keyword phrases that your competition has not thought of. You might put 2019 after it. You might uh, mix up the words. You might you know, go into your theosaurus and you'll find similar words that say the same thing. So, so yeah, it's, it's still competitive because there's channels that have many more subscribers, you know, have much more authority than my own. But then uh, I can, you know, choose uh, different topics that are not as competitive. Okay, so um, so I've created the video with a great hook, and uh, so this is, this is also helps to grow your channel. So my topic today is you know YouTube growth strategies. So if you if you do your keyword research right and you create an engaging video, then um, they're more likely to watch it, and then they get more. You get more. Uh, YouTube's going to promote that video uh, to the uh, to on other people's channels. You know, on on the on the suggested videos on the right hand side. So if people see that see the video on the right hand side or appears on on their home screen, uh, the browse features, the subscription feed, etc., then your channel is going to grow because your videos are appearing in those places. So that's why it's good to create an engaging video to get that watch time, to get that audience retention up. So, um, so then I've got um, the um, number seven, optimize, and this probably goes without saying that. Uh, so, like your title, description, and tags. I think out of those, I think your thumbnail. The most important factors are your thumbnail, you know, create an attractive thumbnail, uh, a great title, and um, then also uh, further on from there, your first few lines of description, because that's what people see when they are watching your video. They can see those first few lines. So I put a, a you know, optimized description in there, and then your tags. But out of those, I think the thumbnail and the title are the two most important things that are uh, for optimization. And then um, if you optimized it correctly, then you might even get your video that ranks for multiple keywords that you've targeted in your tags. So if you've got the TubeBuddy tool, it'll show you like 10, uh, 10 rankings out of the tags that you used for your video. So uh, say you, say your video is about how to train puppies not to bite, but maybe you rank for how to train dogs not to bite, uh, etc. So you can actually, with one video, you can sometimes get multiple high rankings for that video based upon your title, your description, and your tags. So, um, and then number eight, I've got promoting your video because, uh, you know, if you want to uh, grow your channel, um, then you got to promote your video. And then if it appears on your website, uh, it appears on YouTube search, it appears on Google search, it appears across your social media sites, and then people love your content, and then they want to share it with their friends, then, uh, you know, you're, you're actually re reaching a larger audience than that, than the audience that's just on YouTube. So um, you might do a collaboration. You might uh, do a guest blog post. Uh, you might do a, might do an interview or, or be interviewed. Um, but I think you know submitting it to uh, your social media sites. I think most people do that. But then if you have a if you have an email list, then notify your email list. And uh, then also uh, once you've got it uploaded, I highly recommend transcribing a video so those people that can't hear the video or have the sound turned off, maybe they're in the library, maybe they're at work, they don't want their boss to see what they're doing, then or then um, your transcript will 
uh, allow you to have those captions that people can read under your video. So people who maybe they can't understand your accent, maybe they can't hear you, maybe they don't uh, understand what you're saying. Uh, so then they can read the captions and that help, helps reinforce your video. And then also that helps for uh, Google to recognize the content that you're speaking in your video. And then you can take that transcript and uh, use it to uh, post the content on your blog or on uh, Web 2.0 sites. Uh, you could use it for um, uh, creating a PDF file and submitting it to PDF sites or um, uh, to document sharing sites, etc. So promoting the video helps to uh, expose your video to a wider audience. And as you get more people coming from different parts of the net, then that also help to grow your channel. And then I oh, make sure you reply to the comments. So uh, sometimes I find when I go to videos and I look at the co I, leave, I go to leave a comment and then I find that uh, that the channel owner, the video creator is not replying to comments. So then I thought, why, why should I comment if, um, if they're not replying to comments? So make sure you reply to your comments. And so then it'll motivate other people to comment, you know, on your video. And uh, you can even, you can even ask a question and pin it to the top of your comments. So ask a question like, well, have you have you had any trouble with your with your dog late with your dog lately? Then let me know in the comments below. Um, you know, or, you know, ask a question that's related to the content that you just presented. Or you could even uh, say, I highly recommend this uh, this playlist if you want to go deep, take a deeper dive into my content. So then, people when they go to comment, then they'll watch the playlist, then they'll binge watch several of your videos and that will get you more traffic. Uh, Jocker said, uh, you talk about thumbnails having too many expressions, having so many expressions. What about someone who does not do expressions like that? Does that mean they lose out? Um, I think my answer to that is really to, you need to test. So, um, YouTube says that they're going to come out with a thumbnail split testing feature. I don't know that might be this year, might be next year, but I know that TubeBuddy, the legend option of TubeBuddy, um, has a thumbnail split test feature. So you can try a smiling uh, face. Uh, you can try just a you know sad face or different expressions of your face. But I find that... Um, you know, if you if you have uh, if your competitors using faces in their in their thumbnails, then you might try a different expression, and then so you can split test one expression over another, or you could you could split test having no face versus a face. So um, I think it's a matter you know if you if you split test and based based upon the data that you get back from the test after 14 days or 30 days, then you can then you can see what people are attracted to. And then, you know, with that uh, with that thumbnail test, then you can choose that thumbnail that uh, got the most traffic. And then you can create another, another thumbnail to try to outdo the thumbnail that beat the previous thumbnail. So then then the, the whole point is that you get a higher click-through rate uh, with with your um, redesigned thumbnail. So I think it's a matter of testing. Oh, good point, Grizz. Just my take, the phony expression of clicks don't do it for me. Whether you, whatever the expression you got to feel it yeah so I think I think that's a good point um, when I try to when I create my thumbnails I try to uh, think about the story or the content and then try to uh, 
create the or have the expression so like uh have the expression that fits the content i think that's that's uh the way to do it so but i think it's just you know a matter of uh a matter of testing your different expressions and then uh see what gets the what attracts the most traffic uh the number eight uh so so number eight i've talked about promoting your videos so it can, you can um extend your video extend your video content to wider audience so um and then adding adding your video to a playlist so instead of leaving the video alone add it to a playlist or create a different playlist and then um you know putting similar videos with similar content in that playlist so then you can link to that playlist put that playlist on your uh on your channel homepage. uh if those videos are getting a lot of traffic then you might want to move that move that playlist to the top of your channel homepage because you based upon the data that you're getting you know that that uh that playlist or those videos are attracting a lot of traffic so that's why uh initially i used a channel trailer that was a customized channel trailer but then when i when i when i just selected a video that was getting a lot of traffic and used that as a channel trailer then i end up getting more subscribers because i knew that that particular video was attracting uh more traffic so you might want to experiment you know if your channel trailer uh you might be in love with it but it's not getting much traffic but then take one of your most top performing videos on your channel and use that as a channel trailer and see if it makes any difference because uh you know these days with the youtube studio beta you can go into your analytics and you can look at the you can compare all your videos you can look at all the all the videos on your channel and uh you can sort them by uh click through rate average view duration watch time etc and you can find the videos that are that are that are getting the highest watch time that are getting the highest average view duration that are getting the highest click through rate and then if you can identify those videos that are getting a high click through rate then you can you can kind of follow that same template and create more of those types of videos or that that type of design of your thumbnail or that type of uh uh content or um how would you say presentation that you uh that you did in that particular video try to repeat it again in the next video and see if you get uh the same amount of watch time or that design that design thumbnail you can try to repeat that same design so so the youtube video uh, you do studio beta and this is this is number nine uh in the ninth strategy is tracking your performance so looking at your click through rate looking at your watch time looking at your audience retention looking at your average view duration and looking at the uh looking at where you where people are dropping off as they watch your video so as you're looking at your audience retention you know, it starts off high let's see if i can do this it starts off high and then you know it kind of you know kind of goes down the graph kind of goes down so maybe that's better kind of hard to do it but anyway it starts off at 100 percent people watching and then it usually goes down as people continue watching the video so then with the youtube studio beta you can go in there and you know the audience retention and it'll give you the graph and also show you on the graph and in the video exactly where people have started leaving or people have started losing interest so uh so tracking the when you when you track the performance of your videos then you can look at those videos that have done well that have got a lot of views that are got that are attracting a lot of subscribers that have got a high click through rate and then you can double down on that video and create a similar video and see if it gets the same amount of traffic and if it does then create another video so you might do 10 videos in a row uh based on a common theme because you know that that particular video has done well and and even if an old video that you created six years ago probably most of you don't have channels that are that even that old but say you have your 10 10 year old channel 
but a video is doing really well, finally, after six years, then create a similar video on that topic, uh, new thumbnail design, new content, but similar keyword phrased uh, uh, title. And, uh, and I've experienced this, that that video may not do as well as the one that you created several years ago, but because YouTube is showing that that video is, is getting traffic, attracting traffic, then it's a signal to you to create more of that kind of content. So you definitely look, want to look for those drop-offs in your audience retention. And then, you know, if you a way to fix that would be to put a card at that drop-off point so people can, instead of dropping off, they could, you know, have the option to click on a card to watch another video. And Scott has a question here. What's your click-through rate on average? Can you explain how you choose what text to place inside the thumbnails? Um, I think that... I can't quite remember. I think the... The average click-through rate is about between two and four percent. I think that's what what YouTube is saying. So, um, so I would try to shoot for four percent or more click-through rate. So, if you can get higher than the average, then you know YouTube will push more. Or will uh, what, are, what are the, the language they use is they'll surface more of your videos on other people's channels. So that means your videos will be suggested the right hand side subscription feed home screen etc so um so as far as like creating the thumbnails then um you want to you want to create uh, want to put text in there that is related to the title of your content but i would say like two or three words maybe four at the most and make it uh with bold text uh may put on the on the left hand side people are, are um, reading left to right and so make sure you can see it uh, on a mobile phone so you want to reduce that thumbnail down to a small size and see if you can still read the text um, and then also when you create when you use the images like say use your face or say it was a dog uh, you're putting in your thumbnail then uh, then you try to oversaturate the image. So then it might look oversaturated. Uh, I know because so use uh, Canva, so you can you can um, you can oversaturate, you can uh, increase the saturation and you can also increase the sharpness by reducing you kind of move the blur tool to the left and that'll sharpen up the image. So sharpening up the image, saturating the image and then making it brighter you can move the slider to the to the right to kind of brighten it those are all things that you can help to make the the thumbnail image crisp and clear and um and then i would you know if you can use the uh, split testing feature of the thumbnails like tubebuddy you can uh create two two thumbnails and then immediately start the thumbnail test the thumbnail split test and at the end of 14 days, TubeBuddy will show you the statistics of uh, what's which one's getting a higher click-through rate, which one's attracting the most traffic, and then you can select that particular thumbnail out of the two that you've created. So I would shoot for uh, 4% or higher. It's actually sometimes it's difficult to get even close to 4%, but some of my thumbnails have uh six six percent i think the highest might be ten percent twelve percent something like that that's kind of more unusual but i would shoot for the four um oh okay just the the last uh strategy and i think somebody mentioned this at the beginning uh when we were talking about what's the one factor that has contributed to the fastest growth or the most growth of your channel, and that is to be consistent. So number 10 is to be consistent, and that means that, you know, find a schedule that you're, 
um, that fits in, that fits into your day and to, fits into your life. So uh, typically, uh, I kind of you know upload new videos Monday and Thursday, do a live stream on Friday. So I kind of spread it out through the week because if I did it like a, a video like first three days of the week, then uh, probably couldn't handle that. It'd be kind of too stressful. So you might just upload once a week. Uh, and then you can just focus on creating a very high quality video. And um, then, you know, you can maybe uh, you could batch, batch script uh, four videos and batch record four videos. And then, you know, in two days, you got it knocked out and you're set for the month. So, but uh, I think probably the biggest factor for the growth of my own channel, and I wouldn't say that my growth was super fast, but um, consistent growth over a, over a long period of time, uh, the key was actually be consistent. So uploading videos on a consistent basis, uh, once a week, twice a week, three times a week, whatever. Um, you can pace, you know, the idea is to pace yourself so you don't get stressed out. But if you can, you do it that can, you know, upload consistently, um, then it's kind of like a TV show. People are, get used to, to when your video is going to be released, be published. So they kind of know when to expect that. And um, then even, you know, when you say go into a conference or you go on vacation, if you batch recorded your videos and you got a few videos uh, in the can that could be released while you're sick, while you're on vacation, while you're at a conference, etc., so I took a break for like four weeks, almost four weeks, and uh, my my channel still grew, but uh, it didn't grow as fast as if I'd kept up the same schedule as I had done over the past few years. So, uh, but you know, definitely a channel is not going to die if you take you know a couple of weeks off. Um, and probably the uh, kind of a bonus bonus strategy is having long-term goals. So think about where you, where you want your channel to be by the end of the year or by the end of this quarter. So maybe you want to have an extra 10,000 subscribers. Maybe you want to have an, uh, uh, an X, X, X number of, uh, or, or make, maybe you have a, an income goal that you want from your channel. Uh, so think about those goals as you plan your content, as you grow your channel. But I think the main factor is that you have to kind of pace yourself, be consistent, and then always try to improve one thing for each video. It might, you know, you, you know, put in a spreadsheet like your, like your click-through rate or your average view duration and try to increase your click-through rate maybe by 1% uh, each, each week or each month. Then if you can increase your average view duration or you click through rate or your watch time by 1%, then that means, you know, you're elevating the, um, the content, the quality of your content, the uh, engagement of your videos, uh, and that'll help to, to grow your channel. So um, if you've got any questions about uh, growth strategies in 2019, if you've got any, um, anything I might have missed out or you've got another growth strategy that I might not have talked about, uh, put in the chat or put in the comments if you're watching the replay. Give this video a like. Um, and then if you have any questions, put in the chat. I'm just going to scroll through here quickly. <coughs> Okay, uh, Off Grid has said that, uh, and this goes to, I kind of asked this question at the beginning of the live stream, what factor contributed to the growth of your channel? Consistent upload and longer videos helped me. So, uh, yeah, being consistent and then longer videos, I guess, um, uh, you know, when you create a longer video and people keep watching a video that's longer than your competitors, and they stay engaged, then that video is going to uh, do better. Okay. 
Okay, just checking through the questions here. Uh, Rosie says she's got a uh, kids channel. Said starting with family vlog from tons of video took over the years. So I guess that's the value proposition. Oh, okay, said so it was too general. Um, Okay, here's a question from uh, Langzers. Would it be okay to separate the languages into separate channels? And if so, can I repost currently posted videos into new language specific channels and still keep them in current bilingual and still keep them in current bilingual channel? That's a good question. Um, I would say yes, because um, you know the uh, one thing to keep in mind, you know, that, and probably people know about this, is that um, YouTube has cracked down on duplicate content, reused content, repetitive content. So that also goes uh, that all that's not only just about other people's channels, like stealing content from other people's channels, or <clears throat> uh, you know, you putting a whole bunch of uh, Creative Commons videos together with no commentary or no uh, reaction from yourself that uh, YouTube might flag or not monetize your video for that for that uh, reason but um, but if you uh, say upload the same video that's on your channel to another video but but it's in a different language I think that's okay because you're adding you know you have your own voiceover that's in a different language so it's in a way it's the same same content but you're speaking a different language so i'm giving you a yes for that uh you know two different two different channels one in english one in french same content different language then it uh, should be fine uh, lisa's saying that you has been so helpful i appreciate all the knowledge you share you're very welcome Scripting question, we talked about that. Thumbnails, we talked about that. Click through rate, we talked about that. Oh, here's uh, Scott saying that I greatly appreciate your videos. I know how much you how much work goes into making your channel because I'm in your niche. I'm at 1.5 hours per minute of production time. Oh, okay, 1.5 hours per minute. Yeah, it's uh, it's hard work. It's uh, I mean, you you do do make a lot of sacrifices when you put work into your channel. But uh, I think the great thing about um, about YouTube is that you know, like like I mentioned, uh, you have videos that you might have created six years ago. And you forgot about them. You didn't up, up you know, you didn't uh, redesign the thumbnail, which I probably should have done. Um, but suddenly they they appear in the search engines, and they start driving traffic to your channel. So uh, that can happen any time as YouTube changes its algorithms. Uh, sometimes uh, you know, suddenly there's an interest in a particular topic that might be aligned with your channel. Um, say in my case, you know, they changed the the uh, the rules to the YouTube Partner Program, so I just kind of quickly did a video on that, and I just uh, took off like a rocket. Uh, so I didn't expect it, but you know, sometimes those things happen. And um, but the good thing is that as you keep grinding away, um, growing your channel, and it, it seems very slow. But as you create more videos and release more videos, those videos are going to be working for you 24 hours a day, seven days a week. When you're sick, when you're on vacation, when you're, you know, when you're uh, at a conference, whatever. 
And I think that's the beautiful thing about YouTube. So in a way, investing 1.5 hours per minute might seem a lot at the begin at the front end, but say that video produces traffic, leads, subscribers, and revenue for you 24 hours a day, seven days a week for next three years, then that 10 hours you put into it or two days you put into it is definitely well worth it, in my view. Oh, I'm just saying that um, my videos that are an hour long tend to get promoted more even through watch time is 20% promo, even though the watch time is 20%, my actual watch time is less than shorter videos. Uh, yeah, well, if you got, uh, if a video is an hour long, probably very hard to hold people's attention for that long, let's make, unless it's maybe a live stream, because my live streams only get a watch time like, maybe six minutes, 10 minutes at, at tops. So in terms of a long video, the watch time, well, watch time for me is longer than a short video, but uh, but for live streams, they don't seem to do as well as the regular videos. Uh, but I would say that, um, you know, think about creating shorter videos if you're, if most of your videos are an hour long and then see how they, how it does in terms of performance. Uh, Langston said, um, you talked about duplicate content, uh, that worries me. I'm not too sure. Just scrolling up to you. What was a question here? Would it be better for my channel promotion to do this? Uh, what do what? Uh, when it comes to du duplicate content, I've got a video on that. Uh, maybe I'll put that in the description when, after this uh, live stream duplicate because I recently I talked about duplicate content, reuse content, repetitious content. So YouTube is clamping down on duplicate content, but the way you can get around that um, is to uh, add some commentary. So I'd say most, let's say you create, say you are uh, compiling some different Creative Commons videos together. But then you, you do a voiceover because, you, you know, you're allowed to use the Creative Commons videos, uh, reusing the content, re-editing the content, etc. But putting your own voiceover, your own reaction to those videos. So the, the main thing, what YouTube is saying is that you've got to add your own commentary, your own angle, uh, your own reaction. So that most of your video should be about that. So you're, you're talking over the video. Um, uh, I mean, if you're using Creative Commons videos, then you pretty much should be okay, but you should, you know, uh, shouldn't just use just one whole video and upload that um, uh, without you talking over, without adding any of your own uh, uniqueness to it. So, so the main thing with duplicate content, the way around that is to just cre create your whole video that's unique. But if you have to use Creative Commons videos or maybe a using a, a tiny bit of um, uh, someone else's video. I think, you know, if it's if it comes under fair use, then you can use like five or 10 seconds and then give a reaction on uh, on the content that you've, uh, that you've got from somebody else's video. So I did that with a YouTube video, you know, from, from YouTube, I, they were talking about duplicate content and I kind of, took like five or 10 seconds from where they were talking about duplicate content. And then I gave my own view, my own opinion, my own commentary about duplicate content. And uh, that, seem, that seems to be fine. So that's, that's kind of the way that it works. 
So if no, if uh, hopefully all of you are subscribed to my channel, but if you're not subscribed, then make sure you hit the subscribe button. And then if you're uh, not uh, not a member of my Facebook group, I'll just put it in here. Facebook.com group to video bootcamp. Is that right? Facebook.com forward slash group or it might, might be groups, I think. Put an S in there. Two video bootcamp. So, uh, yeah, so I invite you to join the Facebook group. Uh, you can ask questions there. You can interact with like-minded people, get feedback on your thumbnails, on your video, on uh, you know, maybe you have a, a tough question that you want to ask, then uh, I do my best to answer it. If I don't know the answer, then I'll probably say, sorry, can't help you there. Um, but... Um, Definitely uh, check out Facebook group. I've got a question here. Um, Chris, how do you find out if a video is common core? I, mean, I guess you mean Creative Commons. Well, if you check in the video description and click view more, then that particular, um, you'll probably see, see something in the description that says, uh, Creative Commons reuse is allowed, or it might be um, Creative Commons. Uh, what is it? What is the expression? Something by 2.0 or uh, CC by. It's like CC by 2.0, CC by 2.3, 2.4. So, um, but you can go to CreativeCommons.org, or you can, uh, and then just enter your topic in the creativecommons.org the search uh, search tab and it'll show you all the all, all the creative commons videos or creative commons images if you want to get a creative commons image but the key thing is you want to give attribution in the description of your video if when you use it and so you know you're kind of giving credit to that uh creative commons video but uh you can also go to youtube search bar click on the filter and then click on Creative Commons and it'll give you all the Creative Commons videos for a particular topic. Then scroll down, it says view more in the description or see more and then uh, check out if it has Creative Commons reuses allowed or CC by, etc. So, uh, but you don't want to take uh, regular people's videos because that is copyright protected. So definitely uh, you don't want to, you know, steal other people's content. Okay, I don't think you have any other questions here. I want to thank everybody for attending today's live stream, for your questions, for your attendance. And uh, I hope you have a great day. Have a great weekend. And we'll see you on the next live stream. Take care.